Okay. So it's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Polina Wittnova from the University of uh, Surrey. We'll talk about the uh, dimension function of the Lagrange and Markov spectra. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, also very happy to see at least one person who was not here during the Simon semester. Uh, because uh, I think it is going to be a rather uh, similar, but I try to uh, add something new uh, on this occasion. Um, so uh, let us uh, start from the very beginning, maybe, uh, because I think most people here don't worry about Markov numbers every day. Uh, so, briefly, uh, I want to start by introducing Markov numbers. Maybe. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, for the purpose of uh, this, for the purpose of this work, the most con convenient form uh, is to play if I stand here. Or is it better for me to be? I just don't know from the viewpoint of the camera. Okay. Okay. So, as long as I can hear me, if I stand here, uh, so I might uh, in a minute. Okay, so that uh, starts with uh, definitions, and we start with definitions that will be convenient for us uh, to work later with, and uh, there are many ways to decide mark to define Markov numbers, but we are going to work with a definition by continued fractions. Uh, and they are easy to generalize uh, to other contexts as well. So uh, here is a continued fraction, and it is a, for me it is just an ordinary continuous fraction, it means that uh, all elements are just uh, natural numbers. Uh, you can now generalize this concept by taking, for example, continued fractions consisting of polynomials and things like this, uh, or, for, or with any, in fact, link of integers. Uh, but we are still in uh, 19th century continued fractions. And uh, then uh, we can also consider by infinite sequences uh, and to any by infinite sequence of natural numbers, you can just uh, uh, construct a map on this uh, by infinite sequences uh, that takes actually a sequence of natural numbers and uh, it takes moves it to another sequence of natural numbers, it is just a shift. Um, <clears throat> and uh, now uh, we want this to work, to act on a continued, and then we want to introduce extra map uh, now from uh, the sequences into real numbers uh, that takes a sequence <coughs> basically splits into two halves and this is function that is called a lambda uh, by my Greek authors uh, Moreira and Karos Mateusz Santos. Uh, the sequ what the function does for us it just splits uh, the sequence into two bits in the left uh, infinite side and right infinite side, and then uh, it takes uh, continue, two continued fractions, two numbers that we obtain from continued fractions this way, and takes a sum of these bits parts, and uh, this is now a real number. So uh, we start with defining a sequence, uh, this function, which uh, is defined on a space of sequences and takes uh, values in uh, reals. This in this particular way. And uh, using this function, a uh, similar one, uh, Piron in the beginning of the previous century introduced, uh, uh, proved that actually, uh, in, uh, that give an, an alternative definition of uh, Lagrange numbers and Markov numbers uh, of a sequence. So it says that. Uh, if you have a sequence, a uh, by infinite sequence, then you can define this Lagrange value uh, by taking even supremum along the orbit of the function lambda, and you can define its Markov value uh, of uh, the sequence as well uh, by taking just supremum along uh, the orbit. So this is uh, a limit to it. So, 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 so one is limit supremum and another one is just supremum of the values of your function along the by infinite sequence. So uh, uh, the Perron's result tells us that 
uh, Markov values or and Lagrange values of sequences are exactly uh, elements of uh, Markov and Lagrange spectra that were, the, were introduced uh, previously uh, <coughs> about 100 years before Perron uh, by uh, well, uh, they were probably appeared in the work of Mark Markov and Lagrange and they were uh, named uh, like vice versa, something like this, with Lagrange uh, probably named Markov spectrum in order of Markov and Markov named uh, Lagrange spectrum in order of Lagrange and uh, that was, uh, that was uh, I don't really know the story, but I, I do what I do know is that uh, the uh, the names uh, do not actually correspond to uh, <coughs> the authors, as so, so, so those who studied them first. Um, and uh, <coughs> what the collection of all possible values that you can get uh, is uh, called Markov and Lagrange spectra, and this is a definition that this will be convenient for us uh, today. Uh, that uh, the, the contribution of the Perron that he proved for us that this is the same thing as the classical values in number theory. May I have one question? Yes. So, uh, okay, that, 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 that might be a silly question. So, in, in, the, in the definition of the, of the map lambda, why are we adding the, the, positive value, the positive tail and the negative tail? Is there some reason why it's natural? Why should we shouldn't, I know, subtract or multiply or do whatever we want? Um, well, I think that you can do whatever you like, but probably you don't, you, you will not get Markov spectral. Okay. That uh, the, the, the only uh, reason is that. Uh, is that you will get some other subset of the real line, but by all means you can uh, multiply, uh, subtract, and things like this. The six uh, function, however, is actually um, symmetric. So if you just if you reverse the sequence and you get uh, the, 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 for every reverse sequence, you get the same values. This mm -hmm. is what this yeah, is. I guess tracking doesn't make any sense, but multiplying. Multiplying uh, makes uh, perfect sense. Uh, but, yes, so you just get a different set. I also have to say that uh, in this definition, you also don't need to consider all natural numbers. So there is a, a big, there is a group in. Uh, Liverpool, at least I know, or that I know of, where they consider similar sets, but uh, for example, they forbid number one, okay. or they forbid number two, and you can ask uh, the same questions. This will, uh, but uh, there is a connection between uh, continued fractions and geodesic flows, and uh, if which I'm not going to discuss today, but in principle. Uh, th that th this uh, has some geometric interpretation, if you like, and uh, then uh, this uh, that's that's, uh, there will be also geometric, and uh, that that's, they will have just different theory, probably. That's a different theory that they developed. Um, yeah, I think that's, 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 that's what I know is that uh, the sets. Uh, if you try, if you start to discuss, if, if you exclude some numbers, for example, if you consider all naturals except one, uh, then uh, the mark of uh, the spectra have a uh, completely different structure. So this, uh, this, 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 this the resulting size in terms of fractal structure, uh, they, they, they are different, and they will be mentioned a little bit later. Uh, so my yes. question was, uh, in fact, uh, what uh, uh, did Lagrange and Markov study uh, the set uh, relate, in relation to? Well, they were interested in quadratic forms, mm -hmm. and they were interested in approximating uh, in approximation of uh, irrational numbers by irrational numbers. So they uh, that, that's a little bit different story. Okay. Um, uh, 
Okay, uh, so uh, here is a little bit of uh, history of the subject. Uh, and uh, first result is uh, of by Markov, which tells us that in the beginning, at least uh, in the interval before, before uh, in the interval before three, uh, the Lagrange and Markov spectra are agree, and they are actually uh, quadratic rationals. And uh, so this is a discrete, this is a set uh, accumulating. To uh, this is this is a set of uh, sequence accumulated to three, uh, and it is a set of Markov uh, measure zero. So uh, <coughs> and all of them, this is a countable set. Um, uh, and uh, then uh, another result by Horvitz directly related to. Uh, uh, <coughs> to approximation, to the best possible approximation of uh, irrational numbers uh, by, uh, by rationals, uh, uh, saying that the smallest value in Lagrange spectra is exactly uh, square root of 5, uh, and it is the same square root of 5 which appears in uh, uh, Lagrange inequality, uh, and then maybe a uh, first result by Perron saying that uh, this is probably the first found gap in the Markov spectra, which tells us that uh, the structure after 3 is uh, very non trivial. Can you remind the definition of Markov and Perron's spectrum within the last day? Yes, we go. 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 Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Options for a secret password. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so this is the smallest one. Yeah, but the one that is the most possible limits of the uh, of having uh, blackboards that you can fit more on, on the same time. Um, okay, uh, so, uh, <coughs> so the first result, uh, well, the Perron using his definition exactly, uh, Perron proved that uh, the, there is no mark of Lagrange numbers in the interval from square root of 12 to square root of 13, um, and that the both sets are indeed closed sets. Um, and then uh, there was uh, some, and then <coughs> um, a hole in 1947 uh, found out that in fact uh, there is some number so that the entire semi axis belongs to the Markov spectrum, and uh, then uh, it, became, it is the number that features there is called the, whole, uh, called the name of uh, whole constant, 
And uh, all it was known at that time that this number is supposed to be smaller uh, than the square root of 21. Um, then uh, Freeman, yeah, uh, about 30 years later, uh, set uh, himself to the task of uh, computing uh, this uh, whole score, this number. Uh, uh, and the, the result mm -hmm. was this quadratic ratio. So uh, the only proof uh, of uh, this fact, I think today, is uh, about uh, 150 pages manuscript uh, published uh, by Kalinian State University in uh, around that time, in, around in the in 1970s. Uh, I have an electronic form. Uh, many people tried to read it, uh, and uh, because it, they, uh, as far as I know, no mistakes uh, have been found on this so far, but it is full of uh, very intricate details. And it is also in Russian, it has never been translated. Uh, so uh, this uh, still remains unchecked. And uh, uh, Freiman uh, is, uh, lives in Israel, and I uh, think he's still with us. He's uh, almost 100 now. Uh, and uh, when people try to ask him whether he's uh, sure that this is, a, this is the exact value, uh, his reply was that he thinks that the constant should be somewhere around this number. Um, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, he's, he, 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 he probably right, because uh, it's like, it's like uh, this uh, no mistake yet found. Uh, one could reasonably ask nowadays whether this proof can actually be checked uh, by a computer. Uh, so, use some artificial intelligence to verify it. Uh, as far as I know, uh, nobody was keen enough yet to uh, put it through a computer system. Um, so, anyway, but uh, as far as uh, that the claim is that, uh, that there exists a constant, there is a number, it is smaller than the square root of 21, and the entire ray starting from the square that's, uh, uh, right, right, ray belongs to the Markov or uh, Lagrange spectrum. Um, uh, then, uh, since uh, the, the two spectra are sort of very close, a uh, reasonable question that you may uh, be interested in asking is uh, uh, whether they are actually the same. And uh, then a few uh, results appeared uh, that uh, people were looking at for ratio, for numbers uh, that, um, uh, contain, that, contain, uh, that belongs to the difference of the spectra. And they actually found this. And moreover, there is actually uh, countable uh, elements, but the difficulty is often in uh, presenting them this values explicitly. Uh, so, um, <coughs> uh, uh, read, read the conjunction. Uh, right, okay. So, the Gucci conjunction was in fact that uh, it was very bold. Uh, say that there is no uh, work of uh, number, there is no, as a spectra agree in this interval. Um, and uh, there was a more, more projection that uh, Lagrange spectra actually consists, contains an interval from uh, somewhere before the frame of constant. So the main difficulty uh, that it was known that uh, there is an entire ray, but it is uh, still unknown whether there is uh, an interval before the ray. Um, and uh, finally, uh, my later proved that uh, there is this, that the two uh, sets uh, have in fact uh, the same uh, dimension within the half ray. So this was uh, maybe the first uh, breakthrough in uh, this now century. What dimension is this? This is a Hausdorff dimension. Oh. Yes, the Hausdorff dimension of the two sets uh, is the same uh, 
for uh, in, this, in, in the left halfway. And uh, then uh, this was uh, called uh, dimension function, I'm calling it dimension, which proved maybe after Varela function. And uh, this dimensional function is continuous. Uh, and uh, it is actually equals to uh, 1 uh, for the square root of uh, at the square root of 12. And it is non zero as long as we pass 3. So uh, it is the spectrum is discrete before 0. Uh, then it has full dimension at the square root of 12. And then there is, uh, it is, uh, the dimension grows monotonically uh, as long as um, this, uh, <coughs> so, uh, as, as long as we pass uh, zero, so as, long as, as, as soon as we pass uh, three. Uh, so uh, as far as I know, uh, if uh, you if, if that I did some, some estimates, uh, if uh, you remove, uh, like if you consider, it, uh, if you remove something, if you forbid some numbers, alpha, for example, if you take alpha bigger than one, uh, then uh, it is not uh, actually true that uh, there is that uh, the, the function that there is exist discrete part of the spectrum, uh, but uh, then. Uh, uh, it accumulates to some point, then there exists another part, the discrete part of the spectrum, it's again accumulates probably somewhere, it's again accumulates somewhere, and only then the dimension becomes to grow. So, um, that, uh, this, uh, this, this, for the classical spectrum, this, things do not don't happen, that uh, as soon as uh, we pass the first accumulation point, uh, the set actually becomes, in some sense, thick, that it, it has a uh, positive uh, house of dimension. Is there something known about the dimension of the mark of minus Lagrange? Is it zero? Uh, is no. it zero somewhat? Uh, no, it is, it, it, uh, yes, it is known. Uh, and B, it is not zero, and uh, C, we actually uh, studied this in uh, joint work with uh, Moreira and Mark Pritchard, and even before we did that, uh, they proved that um, the difference between our Lagrange and uh, uh, and Lagrange spectra has a uh, dimension at least a half. Can you, do you know where it, where it is? Because I'm obviously to the left of 3 is 0, uh, around those 3.11 and 3.929 is still 0, so do you know where it is? Uh, uh, where does it live? Well, they, they, can, they, 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 they construct uh, some counter sets which sit in the difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's... that's uh, what is... When, it, when it exactly is a lift, I don't recall to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. uh, let me let me think a little bit. Uh, look, no, I I'm afraid I will have to look it up. Okay. So I don't know it by I don't know it by heart. Uh, so uh, what <coughs> that we had a little bit added to this. Uh, that uh, in fact uh, they found that there is a point that there is some more points explicitly in this spectra. Uh, we proved that we break that the acoustic conjecture uh, was uh, broken, and we also found that there is a Lagrange uh, point in uh, at, at 4.5, uh, which is uh, sort of very special because it has uh, Lagrange because it has. Uh, uh, well, it is it is a short rational number, so usually you would expect uh, that usually numbers that appear here they are quadratic rationals, but um, yeah, but in this occasion, in this occasion uh, we managed to find some numbers uh, in the Lagrange spectra which are uh, small, nice uh, rational numbers. 
So this is exactly 4.5. Yes, this is exactly 4.5. Yes, it is. A, it is. A, it is. A, it is Lagrange number. It is exactly 4.5. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is a dimension function uh, that uh, we are interested in. Uh, we wanted to look at uh, more closer uh, after. Uh, uh, <coughs> yes, today probably. Um, Uh, so, uh, original work on this, so very just, uh, uh, was done by Bombay uh, in the uh, 1960s, I believe, and we are extending uh, this uh, numeric, his numerical results. Uh, he did uh, that in his uh, manuscript, I think he was, uh, was one of the first uh, computer assisted uh, research in this area, and uh, also the methods didn't exist, but all his predictions proved to be correct. So he makes uh, a lot of statements about uh, what dimensions should be of various uh, counter sets, and uh, I don't know how we, we don't know how he did it, but we haven't found any mistakes in his estimates so far. Uh, Okay, uh, so what we wanted to do, uh, we wanted to uh, we wanted to compute the graph of this dimension function, uh, and by means that uh, we wanted to be able to uh, find its value at uh, any point that we particularly want, uh, at any point that you might want, or we want to have a method at least for finding its value of this of the function of, to see how it specifically it grows. Um, and uh, so first, uh, let we build it on our previous work uh, with Mark Polycott as well, um, <clears throat> where we proved that uh, that uh, the transition that in fact uh, happens uh, at uh, this number, um, which is that the first uh, value when uh, the dimension is equal to 1, so it is equal to 1 uh, at square root of 12, but this is a little bit smaller than the square root of 12. <laughs> uh, I have not, so I have not unfortunately uh, tried uh, inverse calculator on this. So um, <clears throat> uh, the approximation that you see is exact, that uh, this is as many digits as we have for this, uh, for this value, so we don't know anymore. Uh, I don't think it is uh, possible uh, to get uh, better estimates at uh, the present, uh, with our present understanding of the theory and the present uh, computer, uh, in the present computers which are available to us. Uh, so, uh, but this was our starting point. So we were looking for uh, how for the uh, <clears throat> for the graph of uh, our dimension function in a uh, very small interval, if you like. So, uh, usually, sometimes in dynamical systems, you want to work with typical phenomena, so this is nothing typical. Uh, we are studying the sets of uh, margin zero, and moreover, we are looking for uh, the properties of a function on the interval of the size uh, 0.33 four and so on. So because uh, we know that it is going to be one afterwards and it is going to be uh, uh, smaller than uh, and it is going to be a zero before so uh, this is this is it. This is what we have. Uh, okay uh, and um, <clears throat> Uh, it was already known to us that this, uh, this function that we have is a counter staircase function. Uh, so it is, a, it is a devil staircase. It is a function uh, which is monotone increasing function, uh, but it is, uh, its derivative is uh, equals uh, to zero uh, almost everywhere. Uh, so it is locally constant everywhere. Uh, and 
this is also what we know about it from the previous work. That means that uh, we know that it starts grows it's, uh, as soon as we pass three, and it reaches one at some stage, and then it stays one. Uh, another result that was obtained shortly before is that uh, apparently no, its approximation is asymptotic uh, near zero. Uh, don't think we have its asymptotic uh, near one. Uh, on, the, on the other side, sorry. We don't have to absolutely on the other side, but uh, near zero, it is uh, comes very close to the Lambert function. So this should be f? Uh, this should be uh, this should be f, yes. It is uh, it is a dimension, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, so there's a lot of typos. Thank you. Uh, there's uh, even more significant typos on the other side. So, and uh, uh, thanks to David Loeffler, who is not here, I think, uh, so, uh, and uh, who gave me access to the number theory server of the University of Warwick by the back doors, uh, where I was able to run the computations in uh, like 24 by 7 for about a month. Uh, we actually obtained uh, this very accurate picture of uh, the dimension of uh, the map of, of the set of Markov numbers in uh, the way it grows uh, on the singular. Uh, so the way we did it, we actually, uh, it is uh, very laborious and it is very long uh, numerical search, uh, namely uh, for every uh, for every value, uh, for every value uh, t, uh, we actually uh, compute a uh, lower bound of the dimension at this point, and then we compute an upper bound for the dimension of, at this point. And sometimes lower and upper bounds agree, in which case we conclude that this is hopefully the dimension at this value. Uh, and this is, uh, strategy is more successful uh, when we are in the large intervals uh, of uh, uh, where, where the function is constant, and the strategy is less successful where the interval so this, it is it is locally constant almost I mean, it's, it's locally constant. But if we are in a large interval, then the strategy gives a good approximation. If we are in a tiny interval, this strategy doesn't good, give very good approximation. But nevertheless, uh, on the scale that we work with, uh, this was sufficient. So, um, uh, actually, some work was uh, done before us, and uh, this, uh, in the uh, 1970s, uh, Kusik and Vahaev identified uh, some gaps in uh, the Markov spectra, uh, uh, but these gaps do not actually corris uh, correspond to the intervals of uh, to the point to the intervals where the function is constant exactly. Uh, so what is happening here is that uh, there are uh, some intervals that there are intervals where there are no points of Markov and Lagrange spectra, but endpoints of these intervals are just as related values. So uh, what is happening here is that uh, you have an interval, it doesn't contain uh, any uh, Markov numbers or any Lagrange numbers, uh, but one, uh, but, uh, on one endpoint, uh, you actually can find uh, a, a sequence of, of Markov numbers accumulated to it, but on the other endpoint, the other endpoint is just an isolated value. So each interval, in some sense, uh, each interval of where the fu dimension function is constant, it can consists of two parts uh, uh, divided by isolated points. Uh, uh, why uh, there is just one, one isolated point uh, divided the interval, I don't know. Uh, but we, uh, among uh, the largest intervals of the plateaus that we found, uh, apparently there is only one of them that contains, uh, consists of a single interval. So uh, it would be reasonable to guess that actually uh, the structure is that there are a lot of 
isolated points in the spectra and uh, you can prove that at least in all sufficiently large intervals that we were able to look at uh, that, that exists actually at least uh, one, uh, that there is a point uh, which is isolated point of the spectra. Uh, I have a question? Yes. Uh, is it clear uh, what structure should number lambda have so that lambda, uh, sorry, sorry, alpha, so that lambda of alpha uh, would give us less related point? Um, huh. I will try to discuss it a little bit later. How is that? Okay, I'll try to discuss it a little bit later. Um, so, if uh, the approximations that you got, uh, I feel like you were actually interested in uh, how it is, looks corresponding to uh, the asymptotic. This is how it looks if you compare it with the asymptotic function. Uh, with, um, so uh, the intervals uh, that we found, that the intervals where the function is constant, uh, we now them in uh, the order of the size. So for the P12, which is here, happened to be, is the smallest one, and uh, maybe P3 is the largest one. So the intervals are number, and they don't uh, why should they indeed? <laughs> they don't go, they don't fall in any particular order. Um, so once uh, once we found uh, the, inter the largest intervals where the function is constant, uh, then uh, it is relatively easy to prove that uh, there is nothing more. You just uh, compute uh, the value of your function at several points in between and show that it is indeed uh, should grow there. Uh, so, uh, for example, this is the first uh, plateau, uh, that, we, uh, that it is uh, the first means that it is the largest one. Uh, you may reasonably ask why it is uh, number P2. Uh, well, because I saw that um, for our purpose, that there are the two first actually uh, are infinite. So we have that, uh, that you can assume that the P0 is where the function is zero, because the spectrum is just discrete and P1 starts at T1, where the function is equal to 1. So this is uh, the second largest, which is uh, the largest finite. And uh, it is uh, this, uh, it, 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 it is this interval. Uh, so all uh, plateaus that uh, we found, uh, they are actually quadratic rationals. So this, uh, uh, this oh, is, is it, I don't know whether there are any uh, plateau which are with m, which whose m points are not quadratic rationals. Uh, maybe uh, there are, but uh, the methods that we have uh, will not be able to identify them. So the methods that we used can only give us uh, the uh, quadratic rational m points. Uh, this is because uh, quadratic rationals correspond to continued to periodic continued fractions and uh, all uh, we can work with, uh, all, all we can uh, do the estimates is that uh, we need to use, uh, we need to uh, have a sequence, we need to deal with the sequences which become eventually periodic. So it can be uh, anything for some finite part, uh, but uh, we need to we use it in order to be able to estimate Markov number, for example, uh, we need to uh, request that our sequence becomes eventually a periodic after some stage. Uh, this is uh, what we were very lucky on this occasion. Wait, so this is the plateau for the dimension function? Yes, this is the plateau for so, the dimension uh, function. Uh, so you might have mentioned it, but I'm not sure if I recall correctly. So there are some values uh, for the Lagrange spectrum inside this plateau. Yeah, is there only one value? It's also, it, it, there is only one, it, it will appear in a second. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so uh, it's uh, that uh, <coughs> this one, in fact, was still found by Kusik. And uh, what he did, that, uh, okay, he was in the 1970s, he didn't uh, have any advanced 
access uh, any advanced access to any advanced computers that you have now. Uh, so he started uh, by uh, simple questions that uh, it, it can, can, can I see the all possible sequences uh, which uh, do not contain uh, one to one. Uh, all, all possible num all possible that uh, as a subsequence. And then uh, it is not uh, very difficult. It's like some combinatorial analysis uh, which tells us that if your sequence uh, doesn't contain one to one, then uh, the corresponding Markov number cannot be bigger than uh, this one, uh, which you obtain just from this particular sequence. And it happened to be uh, uh, four square roots of 30 divided by seven. So uh, <coughs> this is the starting point. Uh, basically, uh, you need to start somewhere. Uh, the guess would be that uh, you need to exclude something. Uh, if you're going to look for intervals of uh, where the if you want to look at any description, any reasonable description of, uh, of kind of, of uh, Markov spectra, and uh, this is how the sets of in Markov spectra are usually defined. Uh, so uh, what we do, what he started with, he just looked at uh, all possible sequences who do not uh, contain a subsequence of uh, one to one. And then we compute uh, Markov numbers for all possible sequences like this. And uh, then uh, uh, we get that uh, this uh, Markov number uh, this, this should be uh, the sum, uh, that it, should be, it should be the sequence which is uh, periodic, which consists, in two, uh, it consists of two periodic sequences. Uh, so the sequence that uh, the one is uh, this one is uh, one two 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 meaning uh, meaning that uh, we start that a naught is going to be uh, two and then uh, we continue infinitely uh, repeating uh, this uh, sequence of uh, four elements and uh, this is going to be our first component. And then uh, we're going to another tail. And then uh, this is this sequence of numbers is repeated to two one two to two one two is repeated infinitely uh, to the left. And uh, then we're going to take the sum of these uh, two continuous fractions uh, of which is the numbers represented by these two periodic continuous fractions. This is what you get. And uh, this uh, based on combinatorial analysis. Uh, can conclude that you cannot uh, get uh, a Markov number uh, bigger, than, bigger than this one. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> then I uh, open, okay, so if I exclude um, uh, this sequence, uh, the sequence of one to one, then I cannot get anything larger than that. Uh, let's just take a look and see uh, what I can get if I now allow one to one. Is there anything? Uh, and apparently it happens that indeed if you allow uh, the subsequence of one to one, if it is now allowed, uh, then uh, you cannot get uh, smaller, <laughs> anything, anything smaller than uh, square root of 10. So uh, <clears throat> uh, now uh, 1 to 1 is allowed. So we are going to play uh, this all possible sequences. It is not only allowed, it is that we consider all sequences that contain <coughs> this sequence. And we are going to consider all possible uh, Markov numbers uh, that we can get uh, from uh, a sequence that contains one to one. And then, uh, uh, again, uh, we are playing a little uh, with some conversion that uh, is the smallest one that uh, you can have. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> why uh, this uh, would be let me explain it uh, let me explain it quickly enough why this would be the smallest one um uh, uh, Okay, I think that they will, I, I'm not going to ask, I'm probably I'm not going to ask help. Uh, 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 and uh, but then uh, you will find out that uh, square root of 10 is actually uh, the smallest, uh, it is an isolated point in uh, the spectrum. Uh, and when we reasonably ask uh, why uh, the square root of 10 is an uh, isolated point in the spectrum, and uh, here again uh, we need to play with the sequences um, a little bit further. So, uh, in some sense, uh, what we do, uh, we try to think that, okay, uh, uh, we assume that uh, we have uh, a sequence of one to one, then what can happen afterwards? Well, uh, what can happen afterwards is that you can add two afterwards, and if you add two after your subsequence of one to one, then uh, your Markov number has to be at least uh, 3.28, and then Okay, say so 3.28, this is 3.16, uh, can we get smaller maybe? Then okay, let's just not add two, uh, then we just add one, and maybe another one. Uh, and uh, then you do computation again, and you conclude that uh, smaller number, the smallest number that you can get is uh, 3.189. Uh, and uh, you think, okay, uh, 3.189 is, uh, there is still a bit of gap with 3.116. And uh, then you think, okay, can we do even smaller than that? And uh, apparently, uh, if, if your sequence, uh, and then you write that if your sequence is at this, this subsequence, uh, then your marked number uh, turns out to be. Uh, List uh, this one and uh, a little bit uh, more of a uh, general analysis of the sequences and more of numbers uh, allows you to deduce that uh, uh, that 10 is indeed isolated viewpoint, related point that you cannot get anything uh, smaller between anything that there is a gap uh, between this value and square root of 10. And then this is uh, your good candidate uh, for the right hand point. And then you need to do a little bit further work and show that, in fact, uh, there is a counter set of non zero dimension uh, which is attached uh, to uh, this uh, point. And then if you pass, is, 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 is that. Uh, and then you can, you can construct uh, always uh, the, the, the dimension is going to is you can construct a set of sequences a uh, set of sequences that the dimension will increase uh, once you pass this value. What is the star in the definition? So the definition of the star is just uh, it's a position of zero. So we, we have when we compute uh, the mark number. Uh, so this 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 means that uh, two is a, is a sequence should that two should be at uh, the zero position. Two should be at the zero position because otherwise we are not in the center. Yeah, this is just it's the not like it's any symbol or some some. No 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 no, some no, 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 sorry. No, I should have said that. Uh, in this construction, two just is, is a star in our notation. Yeah, just we, we want one to one to be in the center spot. Okay. So we say it again. Uh, because you have still the, 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 this uh, one to one symbol, the, the, the one to one uh, combination of what, and you want it to be as central as possible. Yes. So 
that's why we want you to be in this in, in the middle spot. Thank you. Yeah, I, no, I, I need to have I need to have two in the middle spot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, then uh, you do then it gets uh, more complicated when you start to look for other plateau. Uh, uh, in the sense that you need to consider all the sequences and uh, you need to be a little bit more creative. Uh, I think it's, uh, in some sense, it is very low entry area, that, uh, but it is a bit uh, difficult uh, to follow all combinatorial details. Uh, but if you repeat it 10 times, uh, then we get essentially uh, the values of uh, the uh, all 10 uh, intervals of uh, where the dimension function is constant. Uh, oops. So, so we don't get a gap with sequence not containing 1, 2, 3, 2, 1? It's not very so easy. 1, 2, 3. So if you start with 3, then your Markov number will be bigger than the mm -hmm. square root of 12. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, no, sorry, if you start with 3, it will be too close to T1. Okay. And in fact, uh, we sort of hope that uh, there is an interval there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we sort of hope to find uh, an interval in, uh, in the uh, Markov, in the Mar in Lagrange spectrum uh, before the beginning of the ray. And so sort of it's a bit. Uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Computer, which was loaned to me by the number theory cluster, uh, uh, then uh, was working apparently, and it tells us where we should add, look for the gaps. So more precise for the intervals where the function is constant. So more precisely, it tells us that at this uh, value, uh, oh, that this parameter value, uh, the dimension function uh, is at least uh, equal to something, and uh, at most something. So it gives us bounds for any value or for any. Uh, at, at, at any point, and uh, based on this uh, data, if you put have sufficiently many points, uh, you get an idea of where you should be looking for the intervals. And it also tells us um, what are the candidates of uh, this one-to-one, uh, -one, uh, what we should replace one-to-one -one with. Uh, in the first argument, uh, but uh, and then uh, it turns out that the uh, left endpoint uh, of uh, the interval that we find is uh, always uh, is always uh, the uh, has, is accumulation point of uh, uh, of Markov numbers. Um, Always often because there's the often so much points. Uh, so let's say it again. You say always, always. Well, so we couldn't. There is in count. There is infinitely many intervals, counting many intervals. We couldn't study all of them, but for those that we found, it is uh, it is it is always the end point. But uh, yes. Uh, but the right end point uh, usually ends up to be an isolated uh, point of the spectrum for the reasons, for the, for the similar reasons that uh, is discussed. And we need to look a little bit further, uh, we need to work a little bit more to identify the second integral uh, because the isolated point isn't, it doesn't, isn't going to change the dimension. Um, so, uh, and if I want all these uh, intervals of continuity that we uh, find, uh, of, con of, of, of uh, the values where the function doesn't change, if I found only one is just a single interval which doesn't contain any, uh, any values. 
Oh. And uh, the time actually finally sounds much better than uh, we hoped for. And namely we prove that actually the 10 uh, largest non-trivial plateaus that we found is uh, has actually all the intervals of the all the length that the length bigger than uh, five over thousand. So this uh, the, this is the, the exact that, uh, this is a, the, this is the 10 uh, largest that we were able to identify. Uh, we have of course uh, dimension values. Uh, for all of them, uh, so the values as I mentioned, for all of them, we have uh, computed endpoints which uh, turn to be uh, quadratic relations, fortunately, and uh, this is this is uh, the heart of the heart of it. Uh, so, any questions? Did you also find situation? And uh, look at the gas, and to the right it is starting to get some cancer, but the dimension of this cancer is smaller than what we have on the left, and so your dimension function doesn't grow. Uh, no, we have, not, we have not found this. So, fortunately, uh, fortunately, actually, fortunately, the dimension does grow. So, the life is a little bit better than we could hope that it could have been. But uh, yeah, but this is possible. It's, it's, well, the function is yeah. So life, uh, but probably actually, uh, like uh, if we consider non-classical spectra, then uh, if we have the dimension function, probably we have different places. I would expect that situation like you described is uh, possible. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we did all this because we were standing on the shoulders of giants and uh, in particular, so uh, in 1982, uh, Bambi gave us a method uh, for studying uh, this uh, the dimension function. And uh, we are uh, building on uh, his results. So, uh, <clears throat> and his estimates were that uh, his esti so um, the method, if you use his method basically to uh, prove uh, when the dimension becomes equal to one. So this is uh, the value T1, and uh, he, he gave an estimate, which is uh, accurate, seems to be two, uh, three digits, but it was not uh, verified. So in uh, his uh, paper, uh, he claims uh, the values of uh, some counter sets to be something, but uh, there is no proof uh, to justify this, uh, so I don't think uh, I, I, I really don't think I, I really don't know uh, how he obtained uh, his uh, estimates of the dimension, but uh, we didn't find any mistakes. Uh, in fact, uh, at first we saw that we found some mistakes, but then it turned out that mistakes were in my program. So it was not uh, his mistake, it was uh, my mistake. <laughs> uh, once, once I managed to rectify uh, my computer my mistakes in uh, my computer code, it turned out that everything that Bambi claims uh, is in fact uh, correct. Um, so, uh, a little bit on this. Uh, now, uh, Maybe just going back to the analysis that goes into this uh, estimates. Uh, so we start uh, with a sample set. Uh, we start with a simple set E2, uh, which uh, consists of uh, uh, continuous structures, uh, these elements only one and two. Uh, and uh, it's very easy to see that 
its smallest number in this set is uh, a half of square root of 5 minus 1 and uh, the square root of 3 minus 1 and the largest value is square root of 3 minus 1. It is a counter set. Uh, its dimension is uh, very well known. We computed about 200 digits of it, uh, but uh, again, uh, we didn't, uh, probably we should try now, maybe uh, but it, didn't, it didn't seem to be anything nice. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, um, now, if uh, I take a, a little bit of Markov numbers, so if you, if your sequence is say, in one and two, and it is by infinite, uh, then what's the small, uh, what is the uh, smallest Markov number is we know that it is square root of five uh, by result of four, but we also know this because it is a Markov number of the sequence which contains uh, consists of ones, and you cannot do anything smaller uh, than the sequence which consists of ones. Uh, now, uh, what is the largest number? Uh, the largest number is going to be square root of 12, and so uh, this is because uh, this is a sequence uh, which is an alternating sequence. So this is a sequence of 1, 2s, 1, 2s, 1, 2s, and again, uh, you cannot get anything uh, bigger than 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Uh, well, because, uh, for example, if you look here, that probably wanted 2 to be at the zero position, and then uh, how to make uh, the fractions uh, as large as possible. Uh, well, if you want to make a fraction as large as possible, you need to put large numbers, like 2, uh, um, at, uh, <coughs> at the, uh, you know, in the back position, and you want to put uh, even numbers, and so you need to alternate uh, even number, even address and uh, light changes. And, uh, and, and so you need to alternate uh, entries in the even positions and the odd positions. And uh, this is the continuous fraction uh, that you get. Uh, so, um, now, uh, after that, uh, uh, so that we are going to find uh, some uh, number that we want to find an apple that we have uh, some number t, and we want to find an upper bound on the Hausdorff dimension of uh, the Markov spectrum within this ray. So the question would be. Uh, how one can uh, do this, and the method uh, was uh, developed in, uh, by Google Marera uh, that we use here. So, uh, <clears throat> what we want to do, we want to fix some number, and we want to construct a limit set uh, so that uh, it can be consist of uh, ones and twos, and uh, we wanted uh, to have the property that all uh, the Markov numbers uh, that are obtained from this sequence uh, are going to be smaller than the, our uh, threshold value. <coughs> and uh, that's if uh, the result by Google tells us that if you have such a counter set, uh, that uh, <coughs> mm, with a subset of E2, uh, and then uh, if it doesn't, as a, uh, if your counter set consists of all possible numbers that don't contain a uh, subsequence from the set F, uh, then uh, the house the, the quantum spectrum is uh, going to be in, uh, the, in the sum of uh, 2 plus K uh, plus K. Uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, this is the result. Uh, this was proved by uh, Marilyn in uh, 2018, I believe. Uh, and 
this our global therefore becomes basically uh, to look uh, for uh, the final set of strings uh, that we have to exclude so that uh, all map of numbers that we can possibly get are going to be smaller than the number that we chose. Um, and uh, the idea is that if you take uh, actually as a Markov number, which is equal to some uh, value of lambda as a sequence, uh, then uh, the dimension of the sum is going to be uh, no bigger than the dimension, the sum of the dimensions of the components. And then uh, uh, when you get that, uh, the dimension uh, of the upper side uh, should be in the intersection, should be at least the twice uh, the dimension, the household dimension of uh, the Thomas Hunter set. So, how one can use this? Uh, well, one can use this as the follows that it was already used by Paul uh, that uh, if you take uh, sequence, then you take uh, all sequences uh, that don't contain uh, the famous one to one, uh, then uh, one number is going to be uh, smaller than the uh, square root of 10. And what we're going to use from this is that uh, the dimension is going to be, uh, because the dimension of all sequences that don't contain one to one is going to be uh, bigger than 0 0.45, uh, then uh, the dimension of the Markov spectrum of this uh, is going to be no bigger than 0 0.9. So, uh, uh, getting an upper bound is uh, relatively uh, is relatively easy. Uh, uh, so, of course, uh, a natural way of using this is a little bit uh, another way, uh, another way around, in the sense that uh, what we want to do, what we actually want to do, uh, we start uh, by assembling some set F, and then uh, we compute uh, the maximum maxim the maximum uh, map of number that, uh, that you can get. So rather than uh, choosing the parameter T uh, and looking uh, to construct the set F, uh, the computer uh, is doing uh, using it uh, the opposite way uh, that uh, namely uh, we take uh, the set or we take we, we, we construct uh, this but we start with uh, the set of forbidden sequences in this case we start with one to one and uh, then we compute all possible Markov numbers so that you can get. Uh, of this an upper bound for the map of numbers that you can get, uh, so that um, mm -hmm. and uh, then we deduce that at this uh, value, at this value, uh, the uh, dimension has an upper bound. So uh, the result is like this, but in practice uh, we are going, we are using it in uh, like reverse order, is, but we don't care because uh, we need to, in order to, for our purpose, in fact, we need to estimate the dimension function everywhere uh, in the real world. And so, uh, okay, you get a sequence uh, from any collection of forbidden words, you get an upper bound uh, somewhere in some sense. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, that you don't particularly worry uh, where, because uh, if uh, you uh, set this uh, big number, so if you have enough variety, then inevitably uh, you will get about somewhere. Is this the reason why, because your, your graph of dimension function was kind of cut uh, near, near this T1 point? And near near three, it wasn't connected to, to, to the like the endpoints. So is this one of the reasons that you would need a very very large uh, this set F 
to get very very close to the to, to the end. Yeah. So in order to get to T one, uh, your site half should contain, uh, as far as I remember, about twenty uh, six sequences of the length twenty two. Yeah. Which is computationally um, not nice. Yes, which is computationally not nice, and uh, uh, but we were able to get close enough uh, for our purposes. But this, uh, but yes, this is this is, this is this is exactly the reason that it is that uh, your set f. Uh, so you can do it once, in the sense that, uh, but it takes three days, and uh, you don't want to do it very often. Um, Actually, like taking time, uh, taking into account how long it takes to write papers, you may just as well leave it and, and let the computer to do it for three days uh, while you do all other interesting things. Uh, so fortunately, it doesn't uh, make any noise in my house because it is sitting in some in some server room in Warwick University. So that's 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 a luxury. Uh, okay. Uh, so you have an upper bound, uh, but we also need a lower bound. And uh, lower bound is a little bit uh, more, slightly more involved. Uh, namely, it takes uh, all, all the maximum many uh, mark of value. Uh, again, that it doesn't contain strings from the set F, uh, from some uh, set F. And uh, then uh, we take the counter set, which doesn't contain all these expansions, and uh, what we get uh, is that uh, the intersection is the smallest between uh, the dimension of a k and one, two dimension of k and one. Uh, so we take the maximum value, uh, uh, we take some set f, we take uh, maximum mark of values that we can uh, get uh, by excluding all these sets, all these points. And uh, then uh, now the dimension uh, of the set intersecting with this maximum mark of value is uh, going to be at least twice the dimension of our Gauss counter set. Um, so, um, the idea that uh, the main idea that happens here is that uh, we want to construct, we want to define uh, our sequences, and the sequences we want to define, uh, we want to exclude something. And to, to exclude something means that we consider sequences which do not contain something as a forbidden subsequence, and uh, then uh, basically we fill it to the end with uh, some uh, periodic sequence that will give us the smallest uh, mark of value possible or the largest mark of value possible. Uh, this is very combinatorial analysis, gas and way. Uh, so, uh, here's an example of using of this uh, result is that uh, we know that actually our mark of value is going to be. Uh, Smaller than uh, square root of 12 uh, for if it is in 1, 2. Well, this is because uh, if you have 3, then it is going to be instantaneous, then 3 is going into 0's position, and the smallest that you can get afterwards is uh, by filling it again by uh, 3 1s, 3 1s, 3 1s, and then it is going to be bigger than square root of 12. Um, so, <clears throat> if you take just the empty set and allow everything, then you get the dimension is uh, going to be bigger than one because the dimension of a two is bigger than a half. So this is a simple estimate uh, which tells us that our value t1 is in fact should be uh, smaller than uh, the square root of twelve, and it was known, of course, uh, for a very long time. Um, so this is uh, where 
how all this uh, computation, this is where the how uh, the methods that uh, uh, deposit go into the foundations of these uh, computations, how much time do I have actually? Yes. Huh? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Well, then there's plus a file. Okay, um, maybe I'll we'll just uh, skip all transfer operators part and, uh, because we already know all of this. So, and then just uh, go into uh, some uh, combinatorial part. Um, okay, uh, so uh, now we will try to understand uh, how to put it all this together. I try to draw uh, some decision tree and let me start uh, how thus. So I fix the number, I fix the number, and my one number is 3.3333. Three, 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 three. Hold the column state is 3 and 1 third. And what we want to do now, we want to look for all things, or construct all strings, so that the lambda value of all sequence is going to be bigger than 2. Uh, so I need to start somewhere. Um, well, uh, I think that my first digit when the zero in the zero position should be two. Uh, so I start with two. Uh, well, why do I start with two? Well, uh, because if you start with one, so if you uh, if you have one in the zero position, then uh, it is going to be uh, then we will get on the values between square root of 3 and square root of 12 minus 1, and this is definitely smaller than t, so uh, then we need to start with 2. Uh, okay, let's start with 2. Uh, start with 2 so that then we compute the value of, of the lambda function, and you get that it should be somewhere between square root of 3 plus 1 and square root of 12. So this is good enough because uh, our t is uh, in between. Uh, okay, uh, then the next computation, you know, okay, maybe I will add 2 uh, on uh, uh, the left. Uh, if I oh, on the right, if I add 2 on the right. If I add 2 on the right, uh, then how my lambda value is going to change. Uh, well, it turns out that indeed I get interval of uh, lambda values which are all smaller than t, so this is not good enough. Uh, this square root of 3 plus 1 happens if you take a sequence consisting only of 2s. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so uh, let us just, then the next part is, okay, I think 2 is not good enough, let's set 1. Uh, on the right, and uh, ask the computer what he's what he going to get. And then he gets uh, apparently uh, this uh, value, this 3 whole half and 3 plus 5, so 3 or 6. And uh, it's uh, fine because t is, uh, the chosen value of t is somewhere in between. So we continue working up our decision tree. Uh, and then it turns out that we add uh, one on the uh, other side, we have one on the left, uh, then uh, it fits, it, then uh, we get an interval which is going to contain uh, t in the middle. Uh, so from this, uh, you start again, you can add two in front, or you can add one in front, and you create computation over, and then uh, the first interval, uh, the first sequence that you find is that, uh, which is uh, bigger than threshold, is, is, which is guaranteed because that's what threshold is going to be a subsequence of 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So all continuations uh, of uh, this uh, alternative sequence of five numbers uh, is going to have uh, lambda value is going to be uh, bigger than 3.4 and this bigger than uh, the one that our threshold. So this is the first value that uh, we uh, select in our set and put it in our set of uh, forbidden sequences. Any questions? Uh, 
so in this algorithm, you, you kind of uh, rely on the set T2, so on the numbers 1 and 2. Yes. In principle, uh, to find smaller gaps, would you need to add more uh, digits, say, consider all sequences with uh, 1, 2, and 3 appearing? No, yeah, because then you can push the 3 to the zero position, because this is the marker spectrum, spectrum of the Lagrange spectrum. Mm. Which I assume would be very, very much hard. I see. Yes, yeah, so you can. Okay. You, yes, you can put. Exactly, you push, you push 3 in the 0 position, and mm. then uh, you get the graph square root of 12, and we already know that dimension is there is 1. So the study uh, Marcos Pepper just to consider it was. Uh... Well, it depends. It depends what you want. It depends which part of it you want to study. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, like uh, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know your name. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look. Uh, so as from the beginning, that uh, where the the difference, the the uh, where the difference between Markov and Lagrange spectrum sits, it usually it actually sits past the past the point when both have dimension one. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, if you are looking uh, to, if you want to understand uh, the difference between two spectra uh, when the dimension of both of them are equal to one, then you actually need to consider uh, sequences of threes and you actually need to consider sequences with fours as well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, but uh, if you want to work uh, if you're interested in a part of the spectrum that has uh, uh, dimensions smaller than one, then it is sufficient to restrict yourself to uh, the sets of one and twos. It is a, so that uh, there are other questions around that one may consider. So the question that, uh, for example, it is not known. Uh, whether there exists a finite collection of uh, excluded words so that uh, the dimension exists exactly a half. So uh, we know that if you take uh, the set E2, then it has the, the, the all possible sequences of 1 and 2s, then the dimension is going to be uh, 0.53 something, uh, so it is uh, strictly bigger than a half. And then uh, here uh, we, <coughs> in order to uh, in order to find our really our transition point when the uh, set occurs the full house of dimension, uh, we need to construct uh, sets with dimensions as close to one as possible. Uh, but of course, uh, we actually never found a set uh, of the but nobody knows whether there exists. A finite collection of words that one needs to exclude in order to get the dimension exactly a half. Is there any reason to believe that there could exist such a finite collection? Oh, sorry? Well, there are only counter the many finite collections, so there are only counter the many possible dimensions that you can get. Is there any reason why to expect one half to belong to this counter to set? Uh, no, no. <laughs> it, 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 it may not it, it may not exist uh, but of course the, the big collection you have uh, that uh, the, uh, so uh, it's a big uh, question in fact that uh, nobody knows uh, whether the dimension of the size that you get uh, of the gauss counter sites is uh, has any nice algebraic properties so uh, in the sense that uh, we don't know whether it is algebraic number, uh, whether it is transcendental number, whether it is what kind of diophantine properties it has, and things like this. So uh, uh, I have not. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this right now, but I have not tried uh, in your numbers calculator. So I have been told that uh, there are places online at least where you can plug in some. Uh, your number and to tell you whether it is uh, can be obtained from uh, some from e from well known constants using arithmetic operations. 
So it would be able to recognize whether you are now with actually a product of E and pi, for example, and things like this. Or, or it may be you know, pi to the cube and plus E or something like this. Um, so but, uh, uh, basically, the uh, question uh, of kind of direction, so that, that there is, uh, the, uh, there was the famous uh, Texan conjecture, which tells us that dimensions actually dense, uh, but it doesn't tell us uh, whether um, uh, whether any particular number is 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 a, is a dimension or, or not. So it doesn't tell us anything uh, anything about any specific number. Uh, I have yes. a question. So you have method for uh, estimating from above and estimating from the wrong. Uh, uh, the dimension of the spectrum on the infinite frame. Uh, so do we need then uh, to uh, show the equality between the estimates to obtain the uh, exact bound or to obtain that you have some photos? Uh, so, uh, well, if I have uh, an upper if I have uh, an upper estimate and I have uh, low, uh, uh, no, I don't need the uh, equality between the dimensions uh, between, because uh, the what, what, uh, you can use uh, monotonicity and the estimates at uh, two uh, numbers. So, and then to, to deduce uh, that, that uh, uh, if you, you can use the monotonicity and the estimates at two, way, at two values to deduce that it is actually it is actually constant. Mm -hmm. That you don't you know, we, we don't prove that uh, the dimensions are actually the same, and we cannot prove that that they are actually the same because um, well because we have only finite approximations. So I think I compute uh, I compute only uh, five digits uh, or something like this. Um, Any any other questions? It seems to me that all the steps we are doing to estimate the dimension are the same how it doesn't impact on dimension. So does it mean that the results we are talking about how the dimension of those steps should work also for the pattern dimension? So, I don't think so. I would be very surprised. We are right on Markov. Those that we use here to estimate just cantisms, just counters and prime values, some excluded. So for them it is the yeah. of the equal, but so this doesn't imply that the underlying real function that we try to estimate has the same power. Also, there's going to be one problem. So uh, this quality of the uh, dimension for the Lagrangian Markov spectra was for the Hausdorff dimension. I'm not so sure if we have this equality for the packing dimension because then this. This strategy breaks, so then, then you can't move like you can't look only at the, the, the finite sequences. Then you have to count the set with infinite excluded set, and then this whole thing breaks. Okay, I'm sorry, I uh, No, it's fine. I mean, that's, that's why we're here, otherwise, it could just be. Uh, no. uh, okay. Uh, Yes, but of course, uh, to every set that you, to every sequence you include, you also need to uh, include reciprocal of it as well in, in your set of in your set of forbidden numbers. So, uh, for example, uh, this is kind of uh, set that you may get when you uh, uh, when you uh, when you consider 
uh, the possible combinations uh, that when you follow the strategy are uh, explained well, uh, that, that this uh, decision tray. And then uh, the question is uh, how to estimate uh, the dimension of what is left. And uh, this is uh, we just been saved by uh, thermodynamic uh, formalism. Uh, so that's, 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 I think I'm going to stop here. That, uh, we just, uh, it, it is the fact that it is uh, the iterated function that uh, this, this is a limit set of a suitable iterated function system of infinite, of infinitely many uh, contractions of, of this uh, Markov condition, and we compute the dimension of this limit set. I think I ran out of time. Um, Any questions? I think Carol Carol did not want to ask that. Carol, do you want to ask something? No, no, thank you. I, I, I do not. I, I very much like the talk. Thank you very much. It was a very, very nice talk, but I, I do not have question. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so we have uh, always for finding gaps. Uh, uh, that is algorithm uh, eventually find every gap and then you can put uh, like write a program to a computer and to a computer and uh, you will know that at some point that every gap will be found at some point at time at that time. We have infinite time. Oh, yeah. So this is a very good question. Whether you can actually so that uh, there is uh, So in uh, in uh, we have uh, in the paper we actually have computation we actually have so the question is probably whether you can write a computer program which will care which will look after uh, combinatorial analysis as well so that that we will be able to identify that uh, the point that uh, once you have a candidate for the gap. Uh, then uh, the right then a point the end point is uh, an isolated value and then it should look if it is happens to be an isolated value then it should start uh, looking for uh, a way uh, for for the for the second part of the of your interval and continue forward so uh, I'm going to that it would be very nice and I think that if you uh, manage uh, to do that you will also uh, have a problem that will be able to eventually prove Pallis conjecture uh, but uh, I have not done it so that's in principle uh, in principle um, yeah that uh, that is uh, there is, a, there is a class conjecture about stable intersection, uh, stable intersection of two uh, Gauss of two Gauss countries of two country sets, and there is a hypothesis and related to it is uh, hypothesis. Uh, ask the question is when uh, the sum of two Gauss counter sets uh, contains an interval. And uh, there is a paper, so I said, you know, by uh, Moreira and Kors, uh, which uh, uh, shows that uh, there is a permutation of a counter set in uh, the infinite dimension, in infinite dimensional space uh, of, of the scheme, of the scheme in the dimensional space. Which, so that the resulting uh, of the, the, the resulting uh, counter sets, uh, the sum of resulting counter sets, will have the full dimension, but um, that but it is easy dimension. So okay, basically the question is very nice, and I would love to do that, but uh, I think that many people would be very interested in uh, knowing how to do that. But uh, but I but I don't have a I, I don't know whether it can be 
or whether this combinatorial analysis uh, can be uh, taken care of uh, using uh, the computer. Because uh, currently, all we have to do is that the methods that we have, they seem to, uh, I don't know, to require some human uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, Mm. I think so. I think so. At the moment, uh, my guess the answer is no at the moment uh, because um, be because of some estimates are still uh, rely on uh, theorems of the kinds that I have shown that uh, like you need to have. Uh, you need to have a theoretical result which will care, which will take care of uh, of uncountably many options, basically. So that uh, you need something uh, in, in in this flavor, in all of this flavor, which is also board uh, that uh, well, this is of course just the foundation, but. In principle, you, 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 need, uh, you, you need more theoretical input. You need more theoretical input to say something, uh, yeah. say something to, to, to progress at the moment, to, 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 to get rid of infinitely many possibilities that only a computer cannot, cannot, cannot do in finite time. So basically, a computer gives you a good guess, and then you need to do something to check that the guess is correct. Uh, yeah, and then you need theoretical, and then you need to some to be a little bit creative, uh, to, to yes, to, 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 to get rid of infinitely many options which uh, which which are not good enough. Yep, yeah. I'm afraid to ask more questions, but also I'll, I'll still do it. So. What is actually Michal's question, which I think I've really interrupted, I'm sorry. So, is anything done or is anything known about the packing dimension here? Are there, are, are there any results regarding the packing dimension? You mean packing dimension of the spectra? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, and I don't think so. Okay, okay. Uh, so, I'm just asking about the like, state of the art. And I have a second question, which is even more, even more horrible. So, uh, what about the house of measure? Are there any estimates on the household of measures? So for example, in this for this uh, T1 set, uh, for this set from minus infinity to T1, uh, is the first uh, household dimension positive? Zero? Which household dimension zero? Sorry. Uh, so if you take this uh, spectrum intersected with the uh, line from, okay, from your side. From minus infinity to, to, to T1, to this point uh, where the dimension starts to be 1. Yeah. Okay? So now I'm asking not, not about the dimension of this set, but about the first half of measure of this set. Do you know if the first half of measure is positive? Uh, no, we don't. At least I don't. Okay. Uh, do you know of any results in this like, direction? Mm. Not, not to the best of my knowledge. I think that uh, there, is, there is a lot of work on constructing different houses. Uh, there is a lot of work put into search for the, of the intervals, and there is a lot of work put into construction of the uh, counter sets which sit in the complement between Markov and Lagrange spectra. Mm -hmm. But uh, not in the uh, estimates of the Hausdorff measure. Okay. Okay. Is there a question? Is it known that the, the moment from which we see the first interval is not the same moment when the counter dimension gets to one? Yes? So, I say it again. The, the value of t at which the first interval starts. It's not the same value as the value of the Hausdorff dimension. Oh no 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 yes. So the one the first interval starts is the one that we computed, and the one when the uh, the, the sorry the first, uh, <coughs> uh, let me just try to go back to this. You are asking if the uh, the dimension one is given by counter set not by an interval. 
So, so, so it's, I mean, I wonder if I'm, so, okay, can you just ask you, can you just ask the question okay. again, please? There, there exists some number t at which the first interval starts. The first interval starts, uh, the uh, first interval contained in the spectrum. Oh, first interval is contained, not, not, the, not the back interval. No, not the the, the interval in the spectrum. Yes, okay, yes. And there exists a place where the dimension of the spectrum becomes one. Yes. And this is not the same place. Uh, so the, the, the answer is that we don't know when the first interval contained in the spectrum starts. So all we know is that we have an estimate uh, when uh, this, is a, this is exactly the open question whether there are any intervals uh, before the whole thread. Uh, that between, so there is a point when dimensions, there is a point when uh, uh, there is there is a point uh, when uh, dimension becomes one, this is this value, and uh, there is a first, there is a famous constant which was somewhere this one, uh, which is this value, uh, possibly, and t, the one that we found, uh, is uh, smaller than this one. And I uh, think so your question is uh, whether there are any intervals between cf and t1. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Is it, no, well, yes, right. my question was actually whether there are intervals approximating c1. Approximating, approximating, approximating T1. Uh, the answer is nobody knows. So that, uh, I think that uh, because uh, the, they probably know there are no intervals be, uh, containing the spectrum before T1, uh, but uh, the question is that is the fact that there are any intervals between uh, Riemann constant and uh, the value of one dimension becomes one, uh, this is, is not the nox. There are not even partial uh, answers that between T1 and 4 there are no intervals, but maybe there are intervals between 4 and 5. Nothing like this. Yeah. No intervals between square root of 12 and square root of 13. Well, uh, yeah, but this is this is this is the emphasis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it was supposed to be a joke. I'm sorry, the last bit. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Questions? Thank you.